Hi, my name's Steve. Welcome aboard my narrowboat home, Moorland Rose. Please join me as I take a slow boat through Britain. This vlog picks up at Road Heath. I stopped here on the way down Heartbreak Hill. It's got a really handy pub called the Broughton Arms. Heartbreak Hill, it's never far before you come to another lock. In fact, here at Church Lawton, there's six in quick succession. My technique varies from lock to lock. Here there's no gap in the downstream footbridge to pass the rope through, so I take the boat partly into the lock and throw a rope ashore. I can then go ashore from the stern, climb the steps and retrieve the rope at the top, and then pull the boat in by hand. With the boat in the lock and the bottom gates closed, I can slowly and carefully open the top ground paddle. With many single locks, especially these on Heartbreak Hill, after the initial inrush of water from opening the paddle, the water passes beneath the boat, hits the bottom gates, and then pushes the boat forward, holding it against the top gate. But make sure that the sliding plate is in good order. With Moorland Rose resting nicely up against the gate, I can finish opening the paddle.
in a flight of locks like this, once I'm certain that the boat is safe, I can go up the flight and prepare the next lock. Just to reiterate, this method is only for narrow locks and where the sliding plate is in good condition. If that plate is missing or broken, then the front of the boat could get caught in the gate and lift the gate off its hinges or at worst sink your boat. These stone pillars are all that remain of the entrance to a blacksmith's forge built alongside the locks to provide services for the canal horses. I try to avoid climbing lock ladders wherever possible. They are normally wet, muddy and slippery. This unusual shaped winding hole at the top of the three Lawton locks was the entrance to the old line of the canal. When the locks were duplicated in the 1830s, this section was shortened to what we see today. The old line descended through a set of three staircase locks, the only staircase locks on the Trenton Mersey Canal. You can still see the outline of the old line of the canal in the landscape. One of the more unusual artefacts found along the canal is this old rope roller, used to prevent the ropes wearing away the stonework as the horses pulled the boat from the lock. With the boat coming the other way at Red Bull Lock, I can leave the gate open. I could have left the paddles up as well, but I think it is polite to close them. Besides, the crew going down might not see that they are open and open the lower paddles and let water drain straight through the lock. I love it when a plan comes together. The benefit for the other boat, of course, is that you can go straight into the lock. Another awkward entrance to the only functioning lock of the pair.
That aqueduct carries the link to the Macclesfield Canal over the Trent and Mersey. and so to the final lock on Heartbreak Hill. Fortunately there is another boat just coming out so the gates are open for me. Whoops, nearly forgot to take the chimney down to the very low bridge before the lock. Even better, here's Carl volunteer lock keeper who's doing all the work for me. Although the sign says this is the start of the Macclesfield Canal, it is in fact the whole green branch of the Trenton Mersey. The Macclesfield starts at the stop lock about a mile up the canal. Straight in front is the small yard where I'm getting Moreland Rose blacked. I just need to reverse into that covered dock. This should be interesting.
Little did I know that whilst the boat was in dock, Britain would be put in lockdown. But my story will continue. I hope you've enjoyed this journey up Heartbreak Hill. If you did, click the thumbs up and leave a comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. You can then click the bell icon and YouTube will let you know as soon as I upload a new part to my story. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.